Hi everyone, today I'm going to do a current favourites video, it's been a little while since I did one of these and I've got a few products, a few bits to talk to you guys about. So first up is a very exciting piece and it is my new bag child which I got for Christmas. She is the Chloe Faye backpack. I really like the Chloe Faye bags but for whatever reason I've never felt the need to own one. Um, but these little backpacks are so cute. You guys may have seen this in blog posts around New Year's time. Um, I love it. It's raining right now and I just know I would never wear this outside during the rain. Crazy careful about keeping this suede as perfect as I can. As you can see on camera it's kind of coming up a little bit more marked than it is in real life. It's still very nice and soft. Um, so I am very careful to keep my suede rain Free. I've also sprayed it with um, like protectant spray anyway just in case. But yeah it's a little backpack so it's got kind of two straps on the back so you can wear it as a backpack but actually more often than not I use this strap just so that it's within easy reach for me to just grab stuff out of it and then it's got a kind of magnetic clasp and then you can open these up to make it a little bit bigger um, I took it, what have I got in here? I've got, a, I've got a bronzer that was sent to me the other day. Or is it a bronzer or is it a highlighter from, oh no, from Benefit. It's very glittery. Wow, that was complex. Um, so yeah, you can make it a little bit bigger, but this is like my ideal size bag. Um, in the future, if I buy any more bags or kind of have my eye on any more bags, I will be buying bags of this size because I have my bigger ones and although my Proenza Scuola um, satchel is getting a little worse for wear these days because I wear it to uni all the time, it's just the perfect size for uni because it's capacious and it fits all forms of laptop in it and everything. Um, and ev like everything goes in that bag and it's got compartments which make it a little bit easy to organise all that kind of stuff. But apart from to union back, I don't tend to carry big bags anymore. I want to carry something of this size. I don't actually know which size this is, that's really useful. I think it's the small, I think. Um, and it's also described as brown, I think, but it's obviously more of this aubergine colour. It's got gold hardware, which is good for me. It's my baby. I've been wearing it as often as I can, obviously not right now because it's raining. Um, but I love it. I also like that it's like a little bit of a fun colour but still quite muted. For fashion favourites, let's stick with them. I've got two more pairs of boots. I've got these cowboy boots which I featured in a recent haul. Love them. They're from Topshop. I want the lilac pair so bad. They're really comfy. The leather's quite soft and I feel like they're going to look nice when they're worn in as long as I can keep the white a little, or the cream a little bit clean um, and I just love I just I'm feeling the cowboy vibes I want to be a cowgirl all summer so loving these um, I like that they're monochrome so they kind of go with everything but they add some spice to an outfit so I'm in love bought a pair of a new pair of docks that actually fit me um, at the end of last year just the absolute classic style and shape and I've been wearing them to death and I had to mention them because they're a fave and I love them and I wear them all the time um, and I'm working on kind of making them look a little bit more worn I feel like they really edge up any kind of girly outfit or they just add they just add something kind of cool to any outfit really um, I've got a couple of hair care products which is rare for me I've got this Hair by Sam McKnight Cool Girl Barely There Texture Mist you guys know I love a texturising spray because that's the kind of texture that I like in my hair. I like it a little bit bitty, I like it to be vol voluminous because it's naturally, uh, I've got quite fine hair naturally so it, it falls flat super easily. But the main thing, I think I've seen people mention this on YouTube before, I'm not sure. But the main thing with, it, with this is that it freaking smells amazing. Like I would wear this shit as perfume. It smells so good, I don't know what is in here. It's incredible. Every, I've taken it on a couple of like girls weekends and every time I spray it everyone's like what's that? It's this. And also the bottle's beautiful. It is looking a little bit worse for wear because it's made its way on a number of trips now. I love the colour of the bottle and I just love this. Um, nothing better than having a good texturising spray in a pretty bottle with a nice smell. Um, I've also got my 
Bedhead to G Queen Beach Salt Infused Texture Spray. This is one of the OG salt spray products, like before everyone else came out with the salt spray product. I'm pretty sure Bedhead had one. And I feel like it kind of gets eclipsed by other ones. But this stuff is strong. Like, this is good, strong salt spray. And I like my Bumble and Bumble one, but, um, and that one smells delicious, but this one I feel is a bit more effective. So I spritz this all over as soon as I get out of the shower and kind of towel dry my hair and it just gives my hair a nice texture and lets it dry nicely so I don't bas I basically don't have to do anything else to it which is great for a lazy gal like me so big fan of this I've got two of these and they go everywhere with me if I'm going to wash my hair I can't live without that couple of makeup bits um, both of which you've seen in my videos recently so they're not going to be too much of a surprise um, so we've got the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Sheer Sun Serum Bronzer. Love this stuff. No bad ingredients in it, which is always good with something that's going to be on your face, particularly over large parts of your face like a bronzer. Um, it's got a liquid slash gel texture, so it comes out really dark brown, really scary, um, and then it goes on the skin really beautifully, blends nicely. I'm not sure about the shade on this one. It's quite good for me who goes from relatively fair in wintertime, I don't know about summertime, but I think this will still, I'll just put more on, I'll layer it up. Um, I think this will still work for me in summertime quite nicely. So um, it's good for me. I don't know whether it would be way too much on very light skin tones and um, I'm not sure it would add much more depth of colour to darker skin tones. If you're kind of somewhere in the middle, um, I really like this and I really like the texture of it and I love that it's like not going to break me out or anything like that. It also is really beautiful and dewy on the skin. Um, if that's your vibe, unfortunately because I'm an oily bitch I cannot get away with this, I have to powder myself. Um, but yeah, I'm g I haven't mixed it with my foundation yet, I haven't tried that, I might try that in summertime but I have just popped it over the top of my foundation and I am loving it. I wanted like a liquidy bronzer because I just feel like it makes something about it, makes the tan look a lot more natural compared to, I really want a nice liquid blush or cream blush too. They don't make them without the bad, the bad ingredients, you guys. Um, so then we've got the Bare Minerals 5-in-1 BB Advanced Performance Cream Eyeshadow with SPF, which is good, it's going to protect your eyes. It's in the colour Rich Camel, it's so nice. I wanted, as I said in one of my videos, I wanted like an all over lid colour. That would just be a little bit darker than my skin tone to give it like a wash of brown. So I didn't have to mess around with eyeshadow and whatever on the day to day. Um, it is a little bit lighter than I wanted it to be, so I've been using it more as an eyeshadow base, but I do think it works well in that capacity as well, especially if you're a little bit fairer than I am. But it's really it's a really really nice base eyeshadows go on top of it really nicely it's got a good coverage that's so going to cover my veiny veiny lids um and yeah it's just silky and smooth and i like putting it on every day i don't know what the, f the five different things it's supposed to do is i mean one of them's got to be the spf um it's got to be a primer color i don't know either way they do this in lots of colors and it's like a weird range of colors because it's like quite a dark one and quite a light one and i'm like Make some more colours, guys. I want some, like, mid-tones. Um, anyway. Oh, and another makeup item whilst we're here. I've got the Naked Heat palette. You guys watched me um, try this for the first time the other day. Ever since, it has been my palette go-to. I always have a palette go-to, and I'm like, you should really, like, mix this up more often and not just, like, have six months using this palette and six months using this palette. But currently, this is my favourite. I wasn't expecting to love this as much as I do. Um, just because the Naked palette was such a revelation when it came out and everyone was like, neutral shades, <laughs> what is this? All in one palette. And then I just feel like I fell out of love with the whole Naked thing. I brought out so many palettes and I felt like they were releasing them all the time. And when this came out, there'd already been so many palettes released with this kind of range of colours. Those kind of warm tones and I was like, you know, maybe Urban Decay has fallen behind here and just, they've released this far too late. Are we all sick of these colours yet? Do we all own these colours already? Yes. But uh, the formulas of these are so nice and I've been using mostly Anastasia Beverly Hills 
um, with a bit of Milk Cosmetics as well. But these are just really buttery and they blend nicely without loads of fallout like the Anastasia Beverly Hills ones. But they're really pigmented and juicy and nice and I'm just really, really enjoying using them at the minute. So I take everything back that I said or thought about the Naked Heat palette and now I'm kind of in love. So if you haven't got this and you were like, I don't need this, I'm sorry you guys, maybe you need this. So products wise, we have three more items. They're all skincare items. And I wanted to tell you guys about my just updated skincare bits. So I've replaced a couple of my products because as we know, I'm kind of ingredients crazy at the moment. So I was looking at the ingredients of my Garnier Micellar Water, which I love so much. And I was just like, oh no. Um, I use a website called CosDNA.com by the way, you guys, if you want to know, I've mentioned it a long time ago haven't mentioned it for a while so that's where I check kind of the ingredients of my products and see whether they are and see which ingredients are like comedogenic and how far up they are and how bad they are blah 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 so I was disappointed with that so I've switched to a different micellar water I cleanse with my jojoba oil take that all off with a flannel and then I use um, a micellar water usually just to take off the excess um, anything that's left behind. So I'm using this Cordelie one, micellar cleansing water. It's really nice. It's less drying than the Garnier as well, I think because of whatever it's got in it. And best of all, it smells nicer, much, much nicer. So obviously it's more expensive, but I think it's worth it. Then we have, I switched out my Pixi Glow Tonic for the Biologique Recherche um, Lotion P50, this is like a Carolyn Hyron's classic, um, she always goes on about this one, this is her favourite acid, so I thought I would pick it up, I got the classic one, I got it from a website, I think it might be their website, um, but it's called something different like Embassy of Beauty or something like that. Um, it's really good, I saw immediate results changing up my acid from the Pixi Glow Tonic to this. And it's also slightly more moisturising, again slightly less drying, which is nice. Um, and then finally, this is something I picked up at my facialist the other day, it's the Retisse, or the Retises, um 0.25% gel, um, and it's a retinol product and it's apparently got hyaluronic acid in it too and I wanted to include a retinol in my routine for ages especially those times of the month when I'm breaking out a bit more I think it's really useful to have a retinol in your routine and I've tried lots of retinols before but I just don't get on with them because they're always paired with a bunch of silicones or this or that and I just couldn't find one that suited me. It's quite a nice low concentration to start with. I might up my concentration eventually, unless this one works nicely. I use this at night time as my like nighttime moisturizer because it's quite nice and moisturizing because of that hyaluronic acid in it too. And I again noticed, noticed an immediate difference with this one. Um, it just immediately made my skin brighter, calmed down some of my um, redness or scarring, my pores reduced in size, um, retinol is just a hero product, if you can find the right one for you, it's amazing. So yes, I think that's all of my products, I wanted to talk about my favourite TV show of the past few months, whenever I last did a current favourites, which is by far and away Fargo. It's so, so good. Um, I watched the, I think it's 1994 film, I can't remember. Um, a, a very long time ago, like seven or eight years ago, and I really enjoyed it. And basically the TV series is like a spin-off of the original Coen Brothers film. And that sounds like it's going to be the worst thing ever, especially if you enjoyed the original the original film. How can a TV series spin-off of a film be any good, especially a film that's so highly rated? Um, but it is so good. It's written by Noah Fawley, I want to say but it's produced by the Coen brothers, so they still have an involvement with the series. And it's like an anthology series, kind of, so, but um, it all takes place in a similar location across like Minnesota and North Dakota. Uh, each series takes place at a different times. So I think the first one's like 2004, and then it goes back to the 70s, and then it goes um, back to like 2011 or something. So there are some overlapping characters and kind of like little plot things um, and some overlap with the film as well. But it's so, 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 so good. One of the best TV shows I've watched in years. I do like a good TV series, so I feel like that's, that's a lot to say. But yeah, I was just never like drawn to watch it, but I just wasn't vibing with anything else on Netflix. So I was like, you know what, let's try Fargo. 
and I just love it. It's beautifully filmed to start with. Um, it's a black comedy a lot of the time, so it's really funny but quite dark, kind of serious and dramatic at the same time. The plots are really intricate um, and clever without being too like unbelievable. They're good, kind of tightly wrought plots. They're well thought through um, and very clever. And um, the acting's great. Um, who doesn't love listening to Minnesotan accents as well? And I just love it. I think it's so good. It's been a real revelation. I love it. I want everyone to watch it. I've been recommending everyone to watch it. Um, so yes, that's everything you guys. Thank you so much for watching my little favourites. And yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye!